Secret Helpline. Merci d'avoir téléphoné à Téléassistance aux fumeurs de la Société canadienne du cancer. For service in English, press 1. Your call is confidential, but may be monitored for quality assurance. Pour le service en français, appuyez sur le 2. Votre appel est... If you are trying to quit or stay quit, press 1. If you are a friend or family member trying to help someone quit, press 2. If you are a health professional, media, or calling from another organization, press 3. Start. If this is your first time calling Smokers Helpline, press 1. If you are returning a call from a quit coach or have called before, press 2. 6. Please hold. are helping other clients. In order to better understand how to support you and to save time on your next call, our automated system can ask you some general questions about your smoking. This will only take a few minutes. This information will be passed on to a quit coach who will then call you back to provide support. If you would like to use our automated system, press 1 now. If you would like to leave a message in our voice mailbox, press 2 now.
how can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm trying to delay smoking a cigarette. Okay, Is, have you called us before? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Um, you're calling from uh, Ontario, is that right? Yes. Okay. And, sorry, what's your name? Ben. Ben? Yeah. Okay. Ben, do you mind me asking where you got our phone number from? Um, a package of cigarettes that I have. Okay. tell you a bit about what we do here and how we can help you exactly. Okay. Um, basically, we provide free, supportive uh, counseling and information over the phone and through our website as well. Uh, so we can help you with making a personalized quit plan, um, discussing tips and tools for quitting, strategies to help with cravings. Uh, we do have information on different quit methods and products. If you have any questions or anything about those. Okay. Um, we do also have some free booklets, like reading materials with some good tips we can mail out to you. You can set up some follow-up calls, and we can also check just in case there's any local program. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, um, what do you, you said you have advice for, like, delaying uh, how often you smoke? Okay, like, are you trying to cut down? Is that what you're saying, or? Yeah, like, I, I smoke two packs a day. Okay. And I think if I, like, smoked every half hour instead of every 15 minutes, uh -huh. uh, then I'd smoke a lot less. Yeah, that sounds, stands to reason. Yeah, for sure. So... Have you been trying to cut down for a while, or are you just starting to kind of work at this now? I'm starting now. Okay. Well, that can be a great way to go about it. Um, maybe so I can know how to better support you. Can I ask you some questions about your smoking? Sure. Okay. So typically, you said two packs a day. Is that 40 or 50 for you? Uh, 40. Okay. And how old were you when you started smoking regularly? Uh, about 20. Okay. And what's your date of birth? February 2nd, 1984. Okay. And uh, how soon after waking up do you usually smoke your first cigarette? Usually as soon as I wake up. Okay. And are you intending to quit altogether within the next 30 days? Uh, I'm not sure if that's possible. Okay. Would you say within the next six months? That would be nice. Okay. Do you ever use any other tobacco products, like chewing tobacco or cigars or anything like that? Sometimes when I'm in a movie theater, um, you know how movies are like two hours? Yeah. Uh, I use that Nica Nicorette um, uh, spray. Okay. Uh, halfway through the movie. Okay. Have you ever tried any other quit products like that before? I've tried the gum. Okay. Uh, I haven't tried the patch, and I've tried the inhaler. You have tried the inhaler? Yes. Okay. So the inhaler, the gum, and the spray? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and do you have at least one person that you can count on for support to help you quit? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's what we're here for. Glad you gave us a call. Are you being treated for any medical conditions, Beth? Uh, um, yes, I, I, I have a mental illness. Okay. And what, what mental health condition are you being treated for? Uh, the doctors don't agree, but it's somewhere between bipolar and schizophrenia. Okay. And any medical condition, like and asthma, physical? bronchitis, cancer, no. diabetes, high blood pressure? No, no. Okay. And if you were to write on a scale from 0 to 10, how important is it for you to quit smoking? 10. Okay. Um, and on that same 
scale again, how confident are you that you can quit smoking? Five. Five? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of in the middle there. Okay. Why, why do you want to quit smoking? Uh, because I know it's very bad for you and I could die. You noticed anything in particular about your health? Like how it's affecting you already? No, not really. But you want to prevent anything from happening? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what are the situations where you feel most tempted to smoke? Pretty much all the time. Like you have a craving all the time? Yeah. Okay. So any particular triggers, like um, with a coffee or uh, coffee um, after or a meal or anything like that? I usually have a cigarette before a coffee and after a meal when I wake up um, with beer. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable sharing that. Okay. Um, and what's your phone number? I don't feel comfortable sharing that. Okay. Um, did you want me to check for any local support program for you at all? No, as I said earlier, um, I'm being treated for bipolar or schizophrenia. Um, yeah, sorry, I should clarify. The, the, the programs would be for help to quit smoking. Yeah, but the, the nurse who I see about uh, my medication, yeah, she's offered me um, a program to help quit smoking. Oh, great. Okay. And so have you started the program already, or it's something that's kind of coming up? Well, I'm trying to get my drinking under control first. Okay. Okay. So are you saying that you have... Uh, uh, a problem with alcohol as well? Yeah. Okay. And is that like really closely connected to your smoking for you? Um, I would say right now it would be easier to quit alcohol than it would be to quit smoking. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it would be easier to quit smoking if I didn't drink. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of people find that. It kind of goes hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you been actively drinking within the last month? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you're getting some support from your nurse uh, around that, um, especially if it's, it's the same nurse who works with your medication, um, just because we know when people do start to cut back a lot, or, and especially when they quit altogether, it is normal to notice some changes in your mental health. Um, like, everybody's different, but you might find that you feel a bit more anxious or a bit more depressed temporarily. You might not, but sometimes people do find that. So it's just good to work with your, your nurse, your doctor, and around a plan, and just so they, they're not, they know what you're doing, basically. Yeah. So has your nurse made any particular suggestions to you at all about what what they think about how you should go about it, or... Well, I've told her that um, I'm trying to get my drinking under control first. Yeah, okay. And um, she says it's okay if I want to wait. Um, to okay. Um, I mean, it's a program that, um, like, it may not be around forever, but... Um, it's, I have a window to at least try to get my drinking under control first. Uh-huh, okay. Um, so I've been working on that. Okay, good. And it sounds like you're saying, even though you may not be quitting altogether for a while, you do feel ready to start cutting down? Well, uh, yeah, I'd like to... Um, have the skills to, um, like, even if I, what, what would be really good if I could 
get through a movie without using the spray or like yeah. a, a long train ride, something like that. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, if, if, that's, some, if, if that's one of your first goal, we can definitely give you some, maybe some tips, I guess, to kind of start helping you go a bit longer without smoking. Mm-hmm. Um, have you found anything so far that helps? Um, well, the spray helps when I'm not smoking cigarettes. But yeah, I mean, any, any kind of, anything that you can do, any strategies other than the spray? Uh, I guess maybe a glass of water, like some, okay. sometimes that helps. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah, a lot of people do find that. Um, yeah. And sometimes if I'm uh, busy doing something that engages yep. me, um, yep. that helps. But yeah. uh, sometimes when I'm doing something that engages me, that also makes me want to smoke. Okay. Does it kind of depend on what the activity is, I guess? Um. Well, I'm on the computer a lot, and okay. um, the so I, I I I I haven't really thought about what what like just sometimes I'm filling out a form on a website, and I won't want to smoke until I'm finished filling out the form. Okay. Um. But I'm not sure if, I don't know, I don't know what makes me want to smoke and not smoke. Okay. Well, like, like any addiction, I mean, it's normal once you go a certain amount of time without smoking for your body to crave it again, right? It's, it's a drug. So if you go without it for a period of time, your body's going to start to go through withdrawals. They'll start to feel a bit edgy and you're craving and um, you feel like you have to smoke to relieve that withdrawal. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's totally normal. It's part of the addiction. Um, if you're really wanting to try and kind of gain some control over that and kind of stretch out the amount of time that you can go without, without smoking, um, there's definitely some strategies that you can use. I mean, you're already doing some really good ones. Um, I can share a couple more with you if you want. Okay. Okay. Well, um, something that we, we um, go over with a lot of callers is called the 4D. There are just four really simple uh, strategies to help when you have a craving. Mm-hmm. Um, two of them you're actually doing already. <laughs> So the one was just to drink water, right? When you have a craving, just slowly sipping on some water. Yeah. Um, the second one is to distract yourself. I mean, you mentioned that depending on what you're doing, a lot of the time keeping busy um, helps you not to smoke. And, and that's very true as well. If you can kind of shift your attention away from the craving, mm-hmm. um, you know, it does pass. And that, that actually goes in line with another one of the Ds, which is to delay. Because um, most urges, won't, they don't last forever, right? It's, I mean, they vary. Some cravings can last a long time. Others, most of the time, will only last a few minutes. So if you can focus your attention on something else, maybe drink a glass of water in the meantime, eventually that craving is going to go away. Okay. Um. And then the, the fourth D, um, that I don't think you mentioned a lot, anything along these lines yet, is deep breathing. Oh. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's one that a lot of smokers find really helps them. It helps the craving to pass and just helps them to feel more relaxed as well. Yeah. Um, so that might be something you could try, say, like in the movie theater, right? Like when you have a craving, if you can just breathe in slowly, in through your nose to the count of five, and out through your mouth to the count of seven. Yeah. And just do that a few times. Maybe even close your eyes for a second and just focus on your breathing. And that can really help you to relax and just help an urge to pass. Okay. Okay. 
that might be something to, to incorporate. So uh, you're saying that um, if I breathe, like if I'm getting a craving, yeah, um, it'll go away. Like the way I kind of see it happening now is um, I get a craving and it doesn't go away till I smoke. And how long are you waiting? Um, well, I'm able to fall asleep, obviously, so sometimes I wait, like, hours. Uh, uh -huh. uh, sometimes I've, I've been on, uh, I've been on train rides that were, like, three or four hours, and I didn't have the spray, um, and, yeah, I pretty much wanted to smoke throughout the whole train ride. Did it kind of come in waves? There was it like one constant craving the whole time, or? I guess, I guess it did come like waves, but like I was, I was always aware of the fact that I wanted to smoke. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's where some of the other strategies come in handy, right? Like, if you're trying to delay smoking and you're just thinking about smoking the whole time that craving probably won't go away. Yeah. But if you're trying to delay it, and while you're waiting, like while you're trying to put it off, say you do get busy with something else, you can drink some water, you do some deep breaths, that's going to help the craving to pass a lot faster than if you're just just waiting for it to go away. Mm -hmm. right? So it's, it is good to try and, and do those kinds of things, and, and you'll get a bit of an idea for what really helps you and what doesn't. You know, some of those strategies might not work for you. They don't work for everybody. And some of them might work a lot better than others. Yeah. It's kind of a bit of trial and error. Okay. Um, but I liked your idea, too, about just even kind of keeping closer attention to the time, you know? So instead of smoking every half an hour, if you do want to try smoking every, every 15 minutes, or sorry, the other way around. <laughs> Instead of smoking every 15 minutes, if you want to try and stretch it every half an hour, and then use those four Ds while you're trying to put it off, that can be a great way to, to cut down and get some control over those cravings, for sure. Yeah. Also, I was at my friend's cottage um, the other week, and I wasn't allowed to smoke inside the house or the cottage. Yeah. But I was allowed to smoke out on the porch. Uh -huh. And just the fact that I had to smoke outside, I think I smoked less often. But, For sure, yeah. But, but when um, I came back home, I quickly went back to the amount I was smoking before. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping to move out uh, into an apartment soon um, where it's probably likely that they won't have, uh, they won't allow smoking inside the house. Uh-huh. But, like, I'm not, I guess in order to really make it last, you have to quit forever, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's an addiction, right? It's not the kind of thing that you can just do sort of occasionally. Yeah. Pretty much just, it's all or nothing. But it, definitely, if you're thinking about quitting, um, cutting down is a great way to prepare for it. Like, not only will you be um, kind of lowering your, your nicotine dependency, but you're, most importantly, you're, you're learning to control your craving, right? You're not just following the command of smoking every time you have an urge, right? You're, you're gaining control. You're learning how to push through and what helps you and what doesn't help you. And that's, that's really important. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm I'm gonna let you go. Did you want me to set up any follow-up support calls at all, Ben? No, thank you. Okay. Um, I was gonna say if you do ever decide to call back in, yeah. and our service is totally confidential. Did you want to make up like a fake last name or something, and then when you call in um, again, we won't have to go through all those questions with you again. You can just say this is my files under this name and. We can pull it up. Uh, okay, how, like, how about blue paint? 
Blue paint? Yeah. Okay, so I'll see if your first name is Ben. Yeah. And your last name is Blue paint. Okay. Okay, and if you do have any other questions or um, any concerns or whatever, definitely give us a call. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.